Hi, everyone. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Oops. I'm going to put you on the um, big big screen now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to set myself up. <laughs> we can watch you set up. No, well, it, it'd be better if I could. That's it. Uh, you don't, you don't want us to watch you set up? No, it's okay. I, I need to see what I'm able to do because... Oh, you want to see it? I need to set it up, yeah. I need to see it in full because I can only see part of the screen. Oh, right. And then once I've done that, I can actually get it right. Oh, that's not bad, actually. No, hold on. See, oh, no. Hold on. That's my fault because like, I get oh. a little... Okay, now it's good. Mm -hmm. Hi, Grayscale. Hello. Who else is in the chat? He got that. here before I was even live. I don't know. I, 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 it shouldn't even start. I know. Until, I know until you... It's the third time it's happened. I don't know how people do that. Uh, I had to glow. So we've got a little bit of time to chat. So let everybody get in. I'll get myself yeah. set up. And okay, let's you. okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to open up the chat. Oh, right. I'm not in my chat yet. All oh, right. Mm. Um, right, where are you? Where are you? Um, <laughs> I'm in an happier mood now. I've, I've detoxified myself by listening to uh, uh, BG's Greatest Hits today. Oh, that's and it's, good. And it's, and it, it, it's detoxified me. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <clears throat> so if I, if I if I if I if I start doing copyright infringements now, I do apologise. <laughs> so I've got uh, BG songs. He says, he says he is doing a tutorial while you're on, but you're, you're on the big TV and uh, we'll be looking. He'll be looking and listening. Hello, All right. hello, Ian and the gang. Hello, hello. Um, right, what? Where do I need to go? There you go. Hi, Gracie. Old beer buzzer. Hey, got a bit of a frog in my throat today, so. Welcome, everybody. So nice to see you. Sorry we had to cancel last week. Everybody was pretty down because of the COPPA thing. We were, kind of like, we were kind of like bent out of shape. <laughs> I've not. I've just been gathering legal evidence against them just in case they start uh, punching some, uh, uh, throwing some punches out at me. Uh, okay. That's what I've okay. been doing all week. Oh, hi, people, hi, them, guys. Hi, if, if I'm if I'm to look at the letter of the law as it stands, they're very naughty people. Oh, That's I all know. I'm going to say to you guys. Yeah, That's all I'm going to say to you. Oh, they're horrible. So we have Christopher Baker from Germany in here. Yay, hello, Christopher. Uh, right, I've, you popped out. And do I need no? I do, right. Uh, do I need do I do I need that now? No, and we have old beer buzzard poet extraordinaire. He has his own Man. poetry website. Now, have have we got Bruce here yet? Because there's a special later on for Bruce. Oh really? Nope. But nope. I'm friends with Bruce on Facebook, and this is the first time I've done it where I because I always forget, but today I remember to post. To let everybody know on Facebook that I'll be on YouTube All live right. on my channel. So Bruce, if he's on Facebook, he'll find out. Mm-hmm. Because we're doing so much special for Bruce. Because it's, oh, okay. it, 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 it's his 10-day anniversary of being... Um, there he is. Uh, Bruce is uh, here. Tweet, uh, uh, what is it, Bruce? Your 10th yeah. day anniversary of uh, being um, uh, twin she free being what free Tw whatever the column twinches twinkie twinches 
I don't know what twinsies are. Them things that Bruce likes eating. Okay, Bruce. I don't know what you're talking. I don't know what Bruce. Is. Bruce. I don't know. Twinkies. Twinkie. That's what I said. You said no. Twinkie. Twinkie. I, I don't, I don't, I've never even seen one in my life. I just you had to like, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised because you said Twinkie correctly the other times I've yeah. talked to you. I, well, I don't know. I honestly I don't know. Baby. <clears throat> so, a pecan baby from Ireland. Welcome. Mm. So, so later on, uh, we're going to be doing a special just on behalf of Bruce. Okay. Oh, a special picture? Yeah, a special picture just for him. As requested. Oh, oh I think I know what it is because you've talked to me about something. Yeah, something before. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So can you what are you going to do beginner uh, a beginner? Yes, today we're not we're not we're not going to be concentrating on one picture today. I'm going to explain all about okay. uh, watercolor 101. So if you've got some paper and you want to have a go. Oh uh, no, uh, I uh, don't have water. Well, I have no, to. No, I'm I'm I'm, oh, I'm sorry, not I'm about you. I'm, I'm I'm talking to chat. Oh, if oh, anybody's yeah, got any paper and they want to have a go and they've got got some watercolors available. Now's your time to get yourself ready, and in a few minutes' time, we'll we'll have a go, and I'll show you how to go about doing uh, the first 101 basics of watercolor. So that's oh, what we're going to do today. Yeah. There you go, everybody. Invitation to follow along with beginner watercolor 101 with Ian today. You, you don't. You don't have to. I'm, I won't oblige you. I'm not the FCT. I won't, I find, it, you. I won't find you for not following my rules and regulations. Uh -huh. There you go. I might get the odd pun in during today. It's just part of my healing process. What What is part of it? Getting the odd pun and joking. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. yes. Laughter is the best medicine. It is. But I'm going to have the last laugh. <laughs> okay. Oh, hi, buddy. <laughs> buddy going RVing. Hello. Welcome. Nice to see you. Right. Where are we? So. so how long do you think we should leave it before um, we, we make a start? You should start now. Okay, then we'll make a start. Welcome to 101 watercolor. Right. First thing we have to think about is the three main components of watercolor, right? Wait a minute. Three main components. Four main components, even. One being, where are we? Oh, do you know what? I'm, I really do need to get rid of the um, that there because it's going to confuse me forever. Right, right, there you go, bowl of water, that's one, that's really important in watercolour, we'll come back yeah. to that later. I think I would have almost forgotten that, ha ha ha. Yeah, no, right, your next thing is the actual paints, let's talk about them for a, a short while, because um, th this, this is not watercolour, but they come in... Um, pretty much similar tubes like that, right? This is gouache. Uh, but they come in tubes like that, uh, and they come in pans like these, and, and another type of pan called a half pan, which is, funnily enough, half the size of this pan, right? So that's how they come. So they come either in a dry, a dry form like that or in a liquid form like that. And different people use them for different reasons. All right. So that's mm -hmm. your paint. They and, and you can have a broad range. The hundreds of colours. All right. There's your paint. You've got your water. You've got your brushes. And, and there's a million and one different brushes that you can have for watercolour painting. And they can be synthetic. There can be natural hair. There can be a mixture of hairs. 
So that's your brush that you use to, uh, you know, put your artwork on. You can use other tools as well, but they're the main tools that you would use. And then we come to us paper. And again, that's an, a, an array of loads of different types of things. Now, let's just spend a few minutes uh, going through paper because that can be a very confusing thing you've got two types of watercolor paper you've got hot press and you've got cold press and that's literally the difference the the hot press paper is literally pressed hot like an iron would press something so it goes flat whereas cold press is pressed down without any heat on it so it leaves a, a rough surface and there's different levels of cold press uh, it don't really matter at this moment in time but what both of those types of paper have in common is that they've got like weights to them and that will tell you how thick the papers are going to be but most um most Hot press papers tend to be quite lightweight, and that's why they uh, tend to be a bit they buckle and, and and bobble when you put water on them. The the larger the number it is on the weight, the less it will bobble. Right, so that's paper generally, but what you can do with paper is uh, uh, it, it comes in several it comes in loose sheet in a, a bound kind of a way and in what's called a block which is what this is and that has glue all the way around the outer edge so it doesn't move it, it, it's almost clamped down now you might have seen me uh putting it on a a, a, a hard block me, uh, and using something like that which is a bull clip and you can hold it down uh with bull clips like that or you can put masking tape all the way around the out, outer edge of it and hold the paper down while it's wet uh, I, have a, I have a question about that when you use those bulldog clips yeah then, then you end up with places that you didn't paint so you just fix that easily and paint that later uh, yeah i'll show you an example of that right uh a painting i did yeah this is a painting i did at the top there, that's where the bulldog clip was. Oh, you, so you, you just leave it uh, unpainted? Be, because with with a, a watercolour painting, right, uh, there's always going to be a fringe that has to connect to a, um, to a mat that, that, that it sits on, if you know what I mean. It, it, it has a frame called a mat when you display it and it's round about that wide so you're never going to see these oh okay it, it, it's it, it's outside of the the if i were to put masking tape all the way around it it'd have a white line all the way around but it still would be round about the same amount of distance because you need that to actually um stick it to the the mat and that goes behind the mat like that you know imagine my finger being the mat okay uh you, you don't see it so it's irrelevant that you could if you wanted to i mean if you wanted to display it like that we are a mat you, you could you could literally paint that out and fuzz it out because you can reactivate the paint but uh i prefer to do that with it nowadays it saves having to buy masking tape masking tape and once you've bought one of these you've got it for life oh i see right uh-huh so i mean this is this is what you would use otherwise masking tape all the way around it right so i'm just trying to 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to see if I can. Oh, wait a minute. No. We'll start there. You'll have to remind, keep watching everybody because uh, I'll have to keep moving the. Because um, I've got it so closely focused. Uh, you, I might move on to something and not be in frame. So let me know as soon as possible if I'm out of frame. Or I'll have done it for nothing. So, first thing we want to look. So, so we've looked at some of the basic equipment, and and there are other uh, interesting things that you can mention. Like, for example, uh, masking fluid, and, and that's just to create a a, a temporary mask uh, for your yeah. pain. There's all there's, uh, there's all sorts of other things that you can do with it. Permanent masks to prevent the paint getting on it, and, and that's all part of various techniques. But basically, if you've got those bits that I've just talked to you about, you've got a setup for watercolor painting. So, uh, I mean, another thing you might want is a pencil to draw it on, but I don't tend to draw my art on nowadays i tend to transfer it from an original painting so now we've looked at the equipment and tools we want to start looking at how how we can control uh, watercolor because everyone says to me ian i can't do watercolor because i can't control the paint well let, let's have a look at how we can control paint all right. This uh I'll just see if I can get hold of it. Where are you? I'll be back in a second. Where are we? Ooh. No, no. Yes. Right. I'm gonna get to get a, a oh, go on, that'll do. Right, so Hello? Do we do we lose you? E oh, Ian, I can't. I don't know if we lost his audio. Not sure. Okay, he can. He can instant message me. I'm gonna wait to see if I get an instant message from him because. I'm not sure if we lost his audio. And that's oh that's good news, Mystic Unigod. I'm glad to I'm glad to hear. That's wonderful that you had a uh, and he just dropped out. So I guess he's gonna try to come back. Okay, we gotta wait for him to come back. Yep, he just dropped off. Oh hi everybody. <laughs> now you see me. Um that's wonderful news, Mystic Unigon, that you had a great time yesterday. Thanks everybody for being patient. I'm sure he'll be back very soon. Hey, a pecan baby says he she thinks Ian spilled the water. Sp spilled the water on Spilt the water on his uh, computer. Oh no, I hope he didn't spill the water on his computer. Woo, I hope he's not having serious technical problems. Oh.
I th and everybody already said their hellos. We've all said hello to each other. We've all asked each other how they're, we're doing. <laughs> It sounded like he knocked it over. Oh, she's pecan baby said it sounded like he knocked it over. Hi, Carolyn. Ah, oh, Carolyn, thank you for your sweet greeting. What a sweet greeting. Thank you. You're sweet. Thank you. Thank you, sweet Carolyn. Yeah, we have technical. Ian has technical problems. He was just here. He was here for about 15 minutes. He's been here. Oh, he's been here for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, and then we lost him, and he has not sent me anything in Instant Messenger. Let me check my Instant Messenger because, nope, he, he has not sent me anything. Um, he's not sent me anything in Instant Messenger either. Oh, no. No, Carolyn, no, you can come anytime to the party, to the paint party. Um, Ian today is covering basic watercolor 101. He's kind of like teaching uh, for beginners. He's just giving us a kind of like a beginner 101 demonstration lesson. But I hope he's not having serious technical problems because now he's been gone for almost five minutes. How was your Thanksgiving, Carolyn? Time for me to grab some paint. Except, let's see, time, time for me to, except I don't have my overhead camera on. Oh, if I was to paint right now, I guess you, I would, I could do it like this and you'd look over my shoulder. Oh my goodness. I could go like this and you could look over my shoulder. Ugh. But it's um that would be if I'm trying to paint um right. And I don't have an easel, right? Here. I have an easel in the basement. I can't get it right now. Ooh. I'm not taking over this art thing. Oh, no. What? Oh, no. I, I need a backup plan. Wonderful when I can see my busy family and... Speed time with the little one. Spend time with the little ones. Oh, that's nice, Carolyn. I know, and Carolyn. You have a big family, so I'm. I'm sure you must. I'm, I bet you had a good time. With the devil's what? Oh, with the devil's tail. The heart with the devil's tail. It's meaning like, are you, um, yeah, Pecan Baby, your new avatar icon is a heart with the devil's tail on it. So are you trying to say you're, you're both naughty and nice? <laughs> And then Santa will not know what to do because Santa um, Santa will not know what to do if you're both naughty and nice because you need you have to be one or the other for, for to get gifts from him, right? Perfect way to put it. Yeah, the naughty and nice thing. Oh no, I. Everybody, what should I do? 
should I, I don't have my camera overhead for me to do comfortably an art, an art thing right now. Oh, he's back. Oh, let's see what's going on. Let's see what his technical problems are. He's back. Yay. About that Ian, guy. You got, Sorry. You have, you have, do you have so, serious technical problems? No. It, uh, well, I know some of you might think that the FTC uh, probably tried to cut off my computer, but that weren't the case. It's just my computer glitched and I had to switch it down. Oh, so it's not your bandwidth? No, it, it, the computer crashed for some strange oh, reason. Okay. So I'll put you on the big screen again. What I'm going to have to do is, um, what's that one? What's this? Uh, oh, it's funny. Pecan Baby thought that maybe you spilled water on your computer. Your no. Bowl. Oh no, I, I always keep, I always keep my water well away from my computer system, well away. Um, so where was I? You can see me, can't you? I don't know. Just like um, you were talking. I think you you finished talking about paper. You 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 right. I, you finished talking about so, brushes. But can you get started painting? Yeah. Uh, so control of control of. Oh, that's um, what you were talking about. Of, of paint, right? There's several different ways of doing it, and this is this is an example. Obviously, this is this is a tube. I'm I'm just going to switch the auto focus off because that's doing me head in. Can't believe that it's not switched on. Come on. Sorry about this, guys. I set it all up and it's crashed and I've, it's took all my settings out now. Well, it looks it's annoying. Right. Yeah, but uh, it, it, it it should. Uh, see that's on on uh, uh, auto focus. We're we're trying to we're all patient. Oh. Hi, Slee Stack Rule. Oh, Slee Stack Rule says hello from Indianapolis. Very nice. Are there some areas of uh, uh, USA got snow, aren't there? What's all mm -hmm. that all about? Oh, maybe out west. Yeah, maybe out west. A lot of times uh -huh. they get a lot of snow. Out west they do, like Colorado. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't. I didn't really. I haven't been keeping up on the the weather that much. The the national weather. I'm not sure. Right. Maybe somebody in the chat knows. Yeah. Here we go. That'll do. Is, is that clear for everybody? Okay, everybody in the chat, is that clear? Let's see. I cannot. I cannot see your drawing. You can't really. I've I've I've, I've drawn it, and it's it, it's that's the problem with water with uh, okay. video and what have you. So your hand so, and all that. Yeah. Um. So what you can do, right? I mean, first thing you can do to control, uh, control. Uh, watercolor paint is is take it directly from the tube all right so i've just wet i've wet my brush to make sure that's primed that's just got a little bit of water in it obviously what i'd normally do is i put it in one i, I put a blob of it like that there you go um all, what what that is it's 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 neat paint Literally, it, it, all it is is paint. That it's not being watered down or anything. Right. Fair enough. My brush has got a little bit of. Um. My brush has got a little bit of water in it, but it needs to to activate the brush. Oh, Bruce does say that your your autofocus is messing with your picture a little bit, a bit. It, it, it shouldn't do. It's switched off now. So, um, right. To me, so it, it looks all right. I don't know. To me, it looks all right. It might be flickering in and out because that's my, unfortunately, my bandwidth. So here you go, neat paint. Look, I, I've got total control. It only goes where the brush goes. There you go. 
that's that's dry on dry and that's where right. you have the most control absolutely that's where you have the most control right so it's dry paint on dry paper if you want to do it like that right your next step is uh wet paint so on dry so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to make that paint wet oh i don't understand how that was not wet paint that looks like wet paint no it, it, it isn't it's dry paint I've, yeah. fair enough, the, the, I've I, I took that out. I've I took that out there. Oh, okay. I took it out of there, and the only the only water in it was the uh, the water that activated the brush to okay. stop it. From, right. So that yeah, is not really. It, it, this brush can right. Just watch the difference between this and how watery this is, and how I'm 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 just adding water to it now to turn it I into guess. normal paint. Look. Hi, JC. Welcome. Okay, How are you it, doing, JC? Right. That that that's wet on dry. Uh, if you notice, it, it's not as strong, but it's still got a little bit of uh, control. Right. Now, this is where it starts getting difficult. Right. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay down water uh, onto this bit here. Right? You can't see that, but I am I am laying water onto it. Right? Right. And this is where people make the mistake. They put water, they make it very watered, the paper. And then they come to the paint and they go, I can't control it. Well, no, you can't because at the end of the day, it's spreading out. Look, it's spreading out. How can you control that? That's called wet on wet. And okay. See how it's spreading out? Yes. You cannot control that. That's the least controllable. But it does have a lot of things that you can do with that. So what we've, what we've learned there is the drier the paint, the more control you have. So it's up to you to learn how to know how much water to put into your paint and when to use the wet technique, wet on wet. That's that's part of your learning process. But that's how to control watercolour. Okay. All right. So your next thing what we need to learn about is how do we apply watercolour? Now, watercolour is applied in what's called washers. It's not, it's not generally, unlike acrylic and oil, which can be applied in thick applications, watercolour is applied in thin, transparent uh, washers. So I'm going to use my other pa uh, paints now. And we're going to learn several ways to apply washers. All right. So let's uh, get this paint there. Right. The first one, what we're going to do is what's called a flat wash. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you. And it, it's got lots of, it, it's nice and juicy, the brush. It's got lots of, lots of paint. And you, you go along like that and you don't, you don't lift it off the paper and then you bring it along again and then you bring it along again and you keep going like that. Till you run out of paint. And that, if I've done it right, will um, dry completely all the same. There will be no deviation of colour in it. That's called a flat wash. And how I did that is uh, getting loads of paint in my brush. 
uh, nice and wet and not taking the brush off the i'm not i'm, I'm not going shh, 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 shh. you know I'm, I'm i'm not lifting the brush off of the paper so that's a flat wash right your next your next has anybody got any questions about that okay does it, oh let's wait for the chat or any other questions I can't see chat anyway now because I've had to switch it off. Right, I can read so it to you. To... So far, if we're going to have a question, we, we'd have to, I'd have to just, you could keep going and I'll just interrupt you. Right. Well, as so long as we all understand this. So, so we, 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 we've looked at control and um, now we're looking at application. This is the first type of application that you can put in called a flat wash. Your next type of wash is what they call a gradated wash, right? So I'm going to take that very same colour and it might look as though I'm doing exactly the same. So I'm going to go across like that and then maybe across again and then I'm going to lift off. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to dilute it slightly, the paint that I've got in my brush, and then start off from where I was going, and then along again, and along again like that. And then put my brush back in water again, dilute that, and go like that. And then keep doing this process. Oh, Mystic Unigon says, Ian, you're one of the best at explaining things. Oh, thank you. And can you see the difference yes. in that one and this one? Yeah. From the top, it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter. And that's 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 called a gradated. Um I would wash. think that would be tricky that each time you you take a little bit of the pigment out of your brush for the next stroke that you didn't take out too much. Well, you just have to, do, all you have to do is dip your brush in the water, your little bowl that you've got of water, and uh, and just slowly but surely gradate, your, gradate it down as you're going down. And these ones are very good for sky. I know, that's a good one for sky. Right. So the last one we're going to look at, there are others, but the last one what we're going to look at today is is similar so we're going to start again. Uh, is there any questions with regards to this? Okay, anybody want to type in a question? Go ahead. And that's the gradated one. Mm-hmm. And while, while you guys are doing that and working out uh, whether there's a question or not, or not uh, is there any? No. No. Woodwind? No, not really. No. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's too basic for them. These this. No. Um, We're going to. Carolyn says makes sense. She says that makes sense. Right. So the next one is called a variegated wash. Right. So. Exactly like that last one, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna put an area there of paint. Right? I'll just make that a little bit more watery. An area a, area of paint there. And bring it down a little bit. And then I'm gonna get another colour. Right. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same. An area of paint there. Did you paint clear water already as the base mm -hmm. coat? No. Oh, okay. The, 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 you could do if you wanted, but it would just run into one another all, all the time. So you've got this gap here, right? This is where the water comes in, right? So. Now you you're going to add the water. Yes. You get, more, you get more control if you do it like this. So I'm going to bring it up there. All right, and I'm going to do exactly the same with the other one. 
and watch what happens when they touch one another. I've got enough water in it. There you go. It's doing it now. It, it might not have been a good colour. It's just neutralised it. But the centre becomes what that is and what that is. So you get a gradation between that colour and that colour, rather than it just becoming translucent, which is what that that is. So there are your three types of washers. A flat wash, uh, a, a, a wash that goes from being strongly pigmented to nothing, and then a wash what goes from one colour to another colour with its middle ground. And that's what the three main... Three main washes? Uh, Those are the three main washes? They're the three main washes that watercolour artists use all the time. And that's it. Watercolour, you've learnt watercolour in. Literally, you've learnt watercolour in. So, one, one other thing what we need to do, right? Um, well, uh, uh, another set of techniques that they actually, what watercolour is used. What I'll do is I'll use this, right? Uh, to show you two other things that they do. I'm going to get a new, I'm going to get the same colour as that. No, I'm not. I'm going to use a different colour. It might show better then. I'm going to get a yellow. This this is what we call a glaze. That's one layer. All right. All of those are glazes. Okay. They're all, they're all glazes. They're one layer. Okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get another, uh, not, once they're dry, they don't blend into one another, they just glaze on top of each other, yeah? But because they're transparent, the other colour shows through the other side. So, I'm going to get another colour here, which is yellow, and put another glaze over it. Now, that's yellow, but because it's transparent... Look what colour it's gone. Green. And that's another technique that watercolourists use uh, to build up artwork, glazing. Right? Yeah. That's the addition of another, another layer on top of a, an already dry la layer. Now... Because well, it is that, dry. That layer is pretty opaque. You don't really see the blue showing through. No, what it is, I put, I put, I, I put a yellow, a, a yellow color. Right, it was blue, weren't it? Right. Uh, you, oh, you just put yellow. Okay, and it made green. Uh, I, I put, I put because they're both transparent colors. Yeah, I put yellow over it, and now that's made that green. Now, that's a technique that, that, that watercolour is used, the fact that the, the paint is transparent and you can adjust and adapt by layering. But they have to, that, to do that, it has to be dry. And another thing that you have to do, uh, uh, what you can do to be dry is the opposite of that. You take away a layer. So I'm going to show you what you do with that. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that my my brush is damp but not absolutely wet through, and I'm gonna start painting into it like that. Can you can you see that I'm starting to like make a dint in it? Yeah, you just paint with no paint on your brush, right? Yeah, I just I'm just using water, and I, I, I can't find the thing. Right, um, um, uh, just to make sure you can actually get rid of all of that uh, I blot it then and go and that is uh, what you call um, removing hmm 
Okay. So it, it's the same principle as that. But what you're doing is you're adding a glaze. What you're doing with that is removing a glaze. Because yeah. if I had yellow, if I had yellow as a glaze underneath the blue, the yellow would show back through. So once you know that you can do that, you know how to deal with glazing. So really they're the techniques and controls that you need to start with a painting. Oh, I'd love to see, maybe today you'll do it, but I'd love to see you do a painting where you say, now I'm doing this wash and now I'm doing this technique well, and I'm doing this wash. Now, and now, now, now people are familiar with this, we can do that. Uh, uh, I mean, the only other things that you need to be aware of uh, in watercolour is sometimes watercolour issues temporary or permanent masks to shield certain parts from the paint and the water and that gives you certain effects apart from that there isn't anything else really to learn so I mean, I mean, I mean uh, only other thing i can really uh well let's have a look at i mean there is there is neutralizing and using neutral grey tones and then adding colour into it, but that's something well, I don't want to look at today. Oh, sorry, we have a question. Uh huh. Bruce asks, Bruce asks, can he add yellow to that spot? Which spot? This spot. You could. You, 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 what do you mean? I guess he means that spot. He didn't that say that spot there. Yeah, you could do, but it won't have the same effect. If, if I wanted yellow to be there originally, I should have put it before I did the blue. Then when I, I um, pull it off, the blue's pulled off, showing through the yellow. Hello, That's Story right. of Motherhood TV. Welcome. Uh, I mean, you can, but it, it, it probably won't make any difference because it's on top of the blue. You can go out. Like but yeah, that's it. What I will do now is I'll just change my water, and we'll we'll. It, it, it is is that is that a fair enough? I mean, yeah, only. On well, I get all that, but I just like to see it in action because I think it's more well, complicated that's, than that. That, well, yeah, obviously, uh, reality has its own complexities. Right. Because you've got, you, you've got tonal values and shade and things like that. Yes, right. That's why, we, that's why we've got these still lifes to do, and this is Bruce's favourite bit, because we're going to be talking about his, his beloved uh, Twinkies or whatever they're called. The oldie Twinkie. Now, what are we on? Oh, we've got plenty of time. So, uh, oh, gonna, we, have another, we have another question from Bruce. He says, can you zoom out a tiny bit? Well, if I zoom out, you'll not see nothing. Uh, I'll, I'll try. Um, just a second. Well, we have another question. So, Story of uh -huh. Mother Um, Ian today is doing a basic introduction to watercolor. He just mm. showed us the main the main washes three main techniques and three main washes so if this is just introductory beginner and, and it's also an invitation if anybody to wanted to follow it? along oh. and now he's oh. going to start a, a simple painting showing us how he's using these these is all that these any better bros it's just that you're not going to really see it there we go right because I wanted to zoom in on this now because we're we're going to be doing the painting. Of what that. will you be painting today? Today, uh, two still lifes. And is what? And one yeah, of first of all, first one is what? First one is uh, a Twinkie. 
A Twinkie. Okay, that's a, sponge, that's a sponge cake um, snack. As far as I understand it is. I've never had one myself, but there you go. Uh, but I'm, I'm told by eminent experts such as Bruce that they are very nice. And then after that, if we get time, if we get time, I'll, I'll do one of my favourite sweets, which is down here. You can't really see it. It's a slice of a cake. Uh, it's, it, it's called uh, an egg custard. Oh, okay. Right, so and we'll do Bruce that. Said, Bruce said the adjustment that you just made with the zooming out helped because it helped it from stop pixeling. Right. Right. So how how do we apply all these things right in um in real world paintings? First of all, I'll get my Twinkie painting uh, me, me me image up. So it's like a little bit of a bread, isn't it? As far as yeah. I can see, sponge, it's round sponge cake with cream inside. Well, it's flat on the bottom. Yeah. Right. So, following following the one hundred and one principle that we're looking at today, you know, the beginner's guide. Uh, one thing we haven't discussed yet is that when you're painting in watercolor, you should always paint from light to dark because because it's a transparent medium as we've already shown there uh light things can't go over dark things so you've always got to go from light it, your artwork should always you always get your light stuff done first and then your next layer will be darker and then darker again and darker again however many layers you put on it but you must always use light to dark or unless you've got some opaque light um substance that you can use i mean some people do actually if they want to reintroduce white they use gouache like this sometimes or those ghastly pens that never work these do you like watercolor pencils i do like what yeah uh I, i'm not overly keen on using them in my watercolors but uh using watercolor pencils in their own rights i love them yeah oh, okay they're really nice they're, they're nice to use so this twinkie it looks like a creamy yellow is the first color but i'm just wondering whether i want to uh the first thing i'm gonna do is uh one of these washers oh, no i tell her it's one of these washers which is a um a wash that like goes from being strong to light but it's going to go that way because light in this painting here is coming in fact let's mark it Oh, Pecan Baby says that you can buy Twinkies on Amazon. That's amazing. <laughs> Twinkies? What? Amazon UK? I think I think if, if I go to supermarkets in, in our country, uh, in the UK, I probably may have seen them, but there's that many different cakes and buns like that. It's difficult to tell whether the Twinkies are or not. They're just like little sponge cakes, aren't they? Do, do, uh, uh, is the outside, does it have like um, a, a very sweet taste to it, as though it's been dipped in some sort of syrup? No, I don't know. I have, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I have not eaten one in a long time. I don't think so. I think no, it's, it's probably somewhat, it's not coat. It is not coated with anything, but I think the sponge cake is pretty pro probably sweet, but the cream inside is sweet. I don't know. Right. And do I assume it's uh, not 
fresh cream. Well, it won't be because it comes in a packet, doesn't it? It comes in a packet. Yeah. Now, I'm just going to nip and get some fresh water because that's a, a critical thing, and I'll tell you why in a minute. He went to go get water. Okay. Uh, but uh, Bruce, Bruce, you are a big fan of Twinkies. Is that right? I think Ian is doing this painting for you today. <laughs> Bruce said that's just wrong, Mystic. Door. Oh, Ian, are you doing this painting for Bruce today? Because he's a big fan of Twinkies. There we go. I am back. Right, oh, so. oh, oh, I have a question. Are you painting right. this for Bruce today? Because he's a big, because I don't know. Well, is, he a, is he a big fan of Twinkies? Bruce uh, tells me that he's a big fan of Twinkies. But it's been dry for 10 days now, so, you know, he's, he's making the sacrifice. So, so uh, right. Oh, uh, uh, Bruce has said he's eaten about 20,000 Twinkies. Yes, he's a big, he's, he's a big, um, a big Twinkie fan, as, as far as we know. He is our Twinkie expert. And he had to stop eating them because they added a certain chemical that he can't eat anymore. Um, oh, what? They've added it into the... Well, can, can Bruce not make his own? Yes, Bruce, you have to start making your own. They'll probably be better. That's it. Or made ones that, where you know where all the things... Do you know? Come back, come back home made cooking. All is forgiven. Right, so what I'm going to do, remember what we did with this one? Uh, we started off in a strong, uh, uh, where light is, it, it weakens colour, it, it, it dilutes it. So this end here is going to be um, it's going to be dark and this end is going to be light so but we're going to graduate it like that in that mm -hmm. direction so but it's not going to be strong this because I, I don't want it to be overly strong so uh what i'm doing is i'm going to be that's the twinkie i'm going to be painting what's called negative space i'm going to bring it close like that There you go, and I'm, I'm, I'm painting around it, around the thing I want to create. There's nothing actually wrong at this stage. We're putting a little bit of that colour there in it, strangely, because light's coming from that direction. The, the blue will help later on when we put shading in. So uh, I'm now going to... Uh, I, I've wet me wet me uh, brush again with lots of water, so that should now weaken it. You notice how that's got a lot weaker now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm bringing it out, like that. and I'm going to do it again and make it even more weaker until we get to that spot there which has got hardly any 
any light. You you shouldn't be able to really see that much. Of no, that. it has a lot of light right there. Yes. And it'll 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 dry lighter as well. There you go. So that's my background done. And, and just to emphasize that, just to make sure that you know that it's gradated uh, and it's graduating from dark to light, I might just, you know, emphasize that area. Right, that corner. That corner, yeah. Let, just let it just let it fluff out a bit. No, just there you go. Let the water do the work. Yeah, that's it. It, 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 it's, it's going to have a shadow because it's coming from that direction. It's going to have a shadow. Now, um, unfortunately, at this moment in time, uh, unless I do... Right. Um, what I need to do now is, is make a, a very, very light colour. If, if I can possibly do it in a yellowy kind of environment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here and then you'll be able to see it, what I'm what I'm doing. Although you can't actually see the... So I'm giving some yellow ochre, which is nearest I've got to that spongy colour, right? And I'm going to put my first coat of yellowiness in it. Right, so there we go. We've got that like nice, you know, that crispy brown, uh, yellowy ochre kind of color. And where I'm going to take that from is is about there. And I'm not going right up to there, right up to that ridge. Just like that. And that will mean that that there has got a really nice white blend so when, Bruce, it, when it's dry. A, I'm sorry, Bruce has a question. Uh-huh. Yeah. Should should a watercolor be painted flat for better results? Oh, I, I think you uh, need for, to for, 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 Yeah. Uh, listen, you can do it two or three different ways. If, if you're deliberately wanting to use gravity to help you with your painting, you can have it, you, you can have it, angled like that but don't have it too too angled or are you yeah it, that's gonna call it, 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 it will when you're first learning to do watercolors it's better for you to learn to control it on the flat once you've got control of things and you know how to stop spillages and things like that which is something that i've not really explain to you i might go back to that in a bit what in fact we will do um you can raise it up but i wouldn't personally take it much above 30 degrees that's that's the general standard prescription of how far up that is enough for water to trickle down at a nice steady level now if you really want to do it and create some really abstract, weird um, expressions in your painting. You can literally have it like that, but it's incredibly difficult to keep in control of. And you have to work very, very fast. In fact, while I've done that, look, 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 look what's happened to that lip there. Yeah, I would never try that with watercolour. You can do it. It's just that you need to be in control of it. Oh my goodness. They're talking about the different flavors of Twinkies. There's pumpkin Twinkie. There's and now he just said that there is there is mint chocolate Twinkie. Very nice. Oh, and um, Bruce said he he has sent you a picture of the pumpkin Twinkie. Yeah, but he has sent me several uh several pictures of the Twinkies. Sounds like do you know it sounds like a, a kids TV program, doesn't it? The Twinkies. <laughs> no, the whole time, the whole time that whatever they say about Coppin, they never talk mm -hmm. about. They never. Well, I don't think they hardly. Well, they have talked about kid cereals. You, you can you can uh, discuss. But they don't know, talk about kids food on, though. On, on on a video, 
in amongst adults you can discuss and have photographs of children in your video i've looked it up it, 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 it's it's the actual copper law right is uh children passing on data about themselves if, if if you have data any material that pertains to children as long as you've got the right to um waiver that then you're all right you can have pictures you can have pictures in in that's got your grandkids in or whatever or or whatever you're putting up on your website or, or we'd all be fined thousands of look at look at you know uh, granny's putting the photos of the grandkids up is that illegal i don't think so anyway i've been looking at your first amendment it's a fantastic piece of writing Mm -hmm. and um apparently that says that we all have a right to tell ftc to stick it where the sun don't shine apparently maybe so. <laughs> we're all getting hungry now oh no so right around this edge here it, that has some more yellow so I'm, but what I'm going to do with that because it's uh, uh, this sponge, it's like a texture. Yeah, uh, it, it's a bit textured. That. So that you're going to. Uh, you're, not, you're, not talking, you're not talking to somebody here who is a world expert in painting confectioneries. I'm not. I can assure you. It's not something that I don't do an awful lot of still life. I don't know why. Oh, okay. I just don't. You right? do more port yeah. portraits and landscapes? Yeah, portraits and landscapes. Figurative, my... figurative portraits, landscapes. Uh huh. That, that, that's more my thing. Uh, although it is a good thing to practice, right? So, what I've done is I've got some of that uh, yellow ochre and with a little bit of that dioxazine purple that watered down dioxazine purple i've created like a mellow brown and i'm i'm just like dabbing that now over now oh, it needs a little it needs to be a bit more watered down it's a bit strong there you go and and, and i'm trying as best i can to create some sort of like sponge-like texture. texture yeah but will you make will you try to create a texture on the whole sponge cake yeah yeah but i'm gonna make that there my key focal point so okay. i'm not gonna be I'm, I'm not gonna be doing all that sponging and texturing all the way through it what i'll do is i'll just go and it'll fade off into background this area will have a lot that won't it'll be it'll be like that and that's how you create we are having to like totally do everything all detailed you're just focusing on the key element area and really what i, what I want to do now at this moment in time is like I'm gonna see if i can uh, get get a, a little bit of a, a, a slightly darker brownie color into it because at the bottom of a, a what i've noticed at the oh mind you it looks as though it's got a bit of orange in it right that'll do job oh are you looking at a reference photo i am looking at the reference and you know at the bottom of a, a sponge kit you always get a little bit of a a crusty slightly darker almost not burnt but yes. a, a bit that's you know it's been through wars a bit and then i'm gonna like taper that off like that just to get a sense of so it, it, it's strong at this end and as you're going away from yourself it gets less like that. and that's a very prominent feature on the thing that and now I've got that in, I'm going to use that colour, that brown, to reinforce the shadow because I know where it is now. So I've got that, and that's going to go. 
and again it's one of them things where it starts strong there and it gets weaker there so again that's one of those uh, like blending kind of things like that. hi kathleen elliott welcome good to see there you, you go. that, that, that that's well, all right that, i'll type that, it out that, that that's your the beginnings of your shadow Ian is doing a, a beginner. A be he's teaching us watercolor 101, and anybody that wanted to follow along, they could. He taught us different washes and tech, um, painting techniques and then washes, and now using these and showing us how he uses them mm. in a basic Twinkie painting. And then he's going to paint right. egg-colored painting. Right. So all it is now is is keeping going over the glazes and doing pretty much the same that might be a bit strong okay pecan baby says tell ian to think of a plain swiss roll in a square shape yeah i have done chocolate sponges before and got it good i mean let's let's look at it from a different viewpoint let's let's go i'm trying i'm probably doing this a little bit too um too tight so why not just go like this uh, under normal circumstances you mask all that off let's see if i can I bet if I put it there, it'll probably. Yeah, that'll um, mask it. And you can have a bit of fun doing stuff like this. And, and, and you know, playing with your brush. And, and with, with, um, with sponge, it's unless it's a very tight sponge it's never it, it don't have universal it, it, one bubble will be huge and next bubble will be tiny so you've got to try and create that randomness john t cash welcome Kathleen and John T. Cash, how was your Thanksgiving? How did you get on? Did you do any cooking? No, I've only cooked one Thanksgiving dinner my whole life, and it was only for really? me. It was only for two people. No, I've never been in a situation where I had to. And one one time, we were going to. I mean, our brother and sit my brother, my husband's. I mean, my brother and sister-in-law, we offered and she insisted, the sister-in-law insisted, no, 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 mm -hmm. we, we, we want to do it. We want to do it. And um, uh, uh, we went and me and my husband went out to a rest, our, our favorite restaurant. So is it, is it fairly popular to do that? Go out no, and have you? No. It, well, there was, it was a lot of people there, but it's more, I think it's more popular for people to mm -hmm. cook. Cook their own Thanksgiving meal. Well, idea is it, 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 the idea is, is is family are supposed to get together and all that. It's more about the family and having a meal together and being grateful that you've got a family, really, isn't it? Yeah. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. And friends, but, too, I, I think friends. Friends, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say who it were, but I sat last night with somebody who didn't have anybody to sit with. No, I didn't sit with them. I, I, I was on phone with them last uh, yesterday because they had nobody to have a thanksgiving with so i sat in there had a couple of hours chatting with them oh you mean like on on a chat on the phone yeah on oh on the phone okay yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna block uh one thing is about this is uh to do this really properly you you, uh, you, you have to wait for it all to um dry and then put another layer and then another layer and another layer oh. so I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna leave it for time being wait a minute no i'm not 
I'm going to get another lot of colour in. Uh, uh, and that we're going to look at some other bits and bobs and uh, then come back to it. But this is, I mean, uh, for me, I think this is probably the best way to do it because uh, it gives you that randomness that you need. And obviously, if you were doing it as a proper painting, you'd mask round it that I'll put something round it. But the other thing you can do at the moment, I'll, I'll see if I can make a grey, because uh, there's there's cream in the middle of there. So what, all, all we need to do with cream is, because cream's white, more often than not. Good night, Pecan Baby. Hey, have you got to get her off? Right. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to uh, suggest like that. There you go. That's as much as you'll need to do. Um, I'm going to strongly suggest um, again some blue and red and brown and uh, and red. Oh, come on. And uh, do another sweep of that. So ideally, you would want to put how many layers on, do you think? It depends until you've built it up to a point that it looks like a sponge. But uh, I'm just going to bring in a little bit of the blue now. Bring that back down. And there you go, that, that's that. That hopefully gives it... Let's see if there's little bits you can put in there. See, I know I'm getting to a point where I'm overdoing it because um, it's just turning into a mush. So... There you go. Now, I'm going to leave it at that for time being. But what we were talking about earlier on that we said we were going to have a look at, I forgot now. I don't know. Can't remember. We'll come back to this in a bit because it needs to dry. I'm, I'm overworking it and it's all wet and it's just mushing into one another. And that's how to destroy your painting if you're not careful. So you're going to start the second painting? Yeah, that's what I'll do for the time being. Because I were going to do something here, but I forgot what it were. We were talking about something, doing something, and I, I forgot what it were. Um, right, so I'm going to put that there. You can see that, can't you? Yeah. So, yellow. So what's going to be a good background for a yellow, something that's yellow? Could I put it? I know what I'll do. This is more of a dry wash thing, right? What you know the classic uh, tablecloth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a very dry. Um, a very dry application. Where should I take it from? From about there. And then about there. Come on, work. And then where's that gonna go? When it's like a This is the beginning of your second painting? Yes. You'll Hi, Madonna. What? Hi, Madonna. Welcome. Hello. Nice to see you. To see you. Nice.
Do you remember those like oh, the tablecloth? Yes. It's only, I mean, just take into account, you ain't, you ain't got to get your set square out, and I'm, I'm not looking for that kind of feel. So, I'm, I'm just basically roughing it. Are you painting the egg custard there? Yeah, the egg custard will be there. I'm just trying to see if we're missing a bit. That will go probably... And just to slightly loosen it up a bit, I'm going to wet my brush and go. So there's, you know, it's a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that it's not overly uniform. Give it a bit of stylization. Okay. And the, the, the egg custard is going to sit inside there. So, again, this is an example of where light's coming from this direction. So, everything I do at this side has to have a shadow. So. Oh, Bruce, you missed it. Ian did explain. He did explain quite at length about painting on an angle. Did you step away, Bruce? Because. Oh. Um, it, 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 can, it, it, it can go back and watch it, can't it? So, it'll, it, yeah, it, uh, you can paint on an angle, but the and it has a lot of things that you can do when you paint on an angle. But um, there's detrimental things that happen with it uh, when you paint on an angle. And until you've got control of your painting flat, then it's best not to. So all that area there is going to be dark when we're done with it, because light's coming from that way. And that, that there is in shade. So... Oh, no, Bruce said... I don't know, but Bruce said that, no, that is what he wanted to show us. I thought you did show us, but I don't know. Well, that, I mean, look, basically, um, you can have it flat like it is now. And uh, that uh, uh, paint will move across the surface of the, the paper in accordance to how rough it is. If, it, if it's completely smooth paper, it'll just spread out and go woof. If it's if it's rougher paper, that progress is is slower and more manageable, right? That's when it's flat. But if you have it tilted like that, that means gravity is pushing down always towards the ground. So what you have to do is work in a way uh, that you, you're not using too much water up because it will suck it all down. And, and if if you are working like that, you also need to um, have something that you can be blotting all the time. You know, you have to be, you know, paint, blot, paint, blot, and you have to stop it from moving. So it, it, it can create some lovely uh, gradients and things like that, but it, it's hard to control and uh, you have to do a lot of blotting and stuff. So my suggestion to somebody who's fairly new to watercolours is paint flat first. Get, get used to using a painting flat. And then once you are proficient at controlling your paint, put it on a slight angle about 10 to 15 degrees you know and, and it will it will steadily move down dependent on how much water you put on your paper and then once you get really proficient you can have it upright 
which is what a lot of landscape artists use. A lot of landscape artists do paint like paint upright. Yeah, straight up. But but they've got control of uh, the amount of water that they're putting into the brush. They've learned how to make sure that the water is under control, even though gravity's pulling it down. All right, Bruce says thank you. That was the explanation he needed. There you go. We aim to please. How, how many have we got in? What? How many people? Mm -hmm. Ten. It just, oh, it's, oh, it's not bad for us, is it? No, that's not. That's not too bad. It, and it went up to fifteen at some point. And then we had oh, about 12, 12 and thirteen holding twelve and thirteen for a while. Oh well, it's, that was probably while I were, weren't on. <laughs> so right, oh, I've got to go to the um, the other picture now. Where's... So I've got this egg, right, the egg custard. If you think about like a, a scrambled egg, it's got a right light eggy colour in the middle there so i'm going to put that in i, I don't want lime yellow I, I want like a really pale yellow and it, it strangely pale enough, a strong hmm? yellow strong but pale okay I'll, I'll, almost like a pastel color now how am i going to do that i'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre in it just to tone it down a bit I don't want it to be lemony yellow. I want it to be it, right. That's really too strong. How am I going to tone this down? Um, right. I'm going to get some of this other ochre stuff. Has it gone to no it needs to be more right i would think mm. you want to, what use an indian yellow the thing is i don't want it to look very very yellow so what i'm going to do is just water it down and make it so translucent that the white shows through so that's what i'll do is i'll i'll i'll, I'll keep adding water and water and water to it to it till it's like the most translucent it is mostly water so there we go i think that might be it so it's this bit here and it's it's really universally one color it, it it's really consistent so what i'm going to do is and i'm going to use a, a dry brush technique Uh, just dab it off a little bit and on top here let some of the um, roughness of the paper give it a tiny bit of texture there you go right uh, egg custard oh no wait a minute I, I, I will put a little bit of um, yellow it's got a crust that goes all the way around it. Oh, so that uh, we call that an eclair. Oh, right. Something. I think that's. I think that's what you're talking well, about. But I'm not sure. Um. Well. Uh, 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 no. I. I want to. I, I want to call it an eclair. Okay. Uh, personally, because an eclair is a. It's a profiterole with a. With cream in the middle of it and then a, a bit of a, a bit of chocolate on top yes right like a chocolate eclair and it's like but, pie crust around the whole thing this it, it, it's a pie crust a, you know like an, an apple pie bottom of an apple pie crust yes the center rather than having the apple pie in it the, the apple in it it has a, it, it has a custard that sets called egg custard because it's made of eggs obviously and um on top of it they put nutmeg so that's what i'm going to do now 
So I'm gonna so I'm gonna get a nutmeggy kind of colour. And Bruce said flan. Flan? Maybe he means flan. Flan. It's closer to a flan, yeah. And I just want to try and make this look like it's a sprinkle of something on top of it. As though somebody's put nutmeg on top of the... Um... There you go. Right. Uh, always with crust. You always get a little bit of crusty bit. That's why it's called crust. And just to differentiate this bit of the crust here from that smooth custard, I'll put some, uh, what they call it in it. No, so it is, it's kind of like, it does have, like you said, a crust, it does have some crust on it. Well, if you look it up, it, it does. There, it, you know, like an apple pie, a bottom of an apple pie. Yeah. Right. It, it, it has a pastry crust, and then in the pastry cut, crust, you pour a custard mix that's really, really thick, and then you put you leave it to set and dry uh, in a fridge, and and it, it becomes solid. And do, have you made your own egg custard? Absolutely, yes. It's lovely. I mean, you can buy it everywhere in England, but. I mean, you can you can pick them up for like a pound, a great big a, a great big basin full of it. So it's, it's one of um, the delicacies uh, that people eat a lot. Right. There's not a lot to that. Um, right. Let's see if I can. Brown and a bit of blue, a bit more brown. Yeah, oh, that'll do. Oh, I've got a nice neutral grey there. Happy accident. No, oh, yeah, I love happy accidents. Just link certain things up. There you go. And you you go and have a look at some egg custard, and and you'll see that that's roughly what egg custard looks like. Although you can get little baby egg custards. Has anybody been and seen um, uh, what they call it, uh, baby uh, baby Yoda yet? No, have you? Have you seen yeah, it? I've drawn it. I saw you draw it. I know I saw you draw it, but have you seen the movie? I've not seen the movie. It's a TV oh, okay. series. A TV series that we've not oh. yet been able to see yet. So, but we will. We'll get to see it one day. One day over the rainbow. <laughs> Copyright Ian Jackson. <laughs> mm, right. This, this uh, it should be lighter than that, so I'm going to put a really weak solution of grey over that, and and that's about that thing that I was telling you about earlier, uh, neutralising and tonal value. So there you go. I mean that's that. that uh, this is what you want to practice you know things like this mm -hmm. like basic simple objects until you're happy that you've got to a stage where you can move on to more complicated things <clears throat> oh is, is there uh, is there anyone in the chat that is um learning watercolor right now like you paint 
that you do paint in watercolor or you're learning watercolor in the chat? Bruce, does Bruce, Bruce do you paint watercolor? Yeah, Bruce is into his watercolors. Hmm. Yeah, Bruce said he is. I, I don't know about anybody else. Well, I hope it's helping, bro. I painted what, quite a bit. I painted quite a bit of watercolor. Yeah, that that's what it's here for. So you know, it's either that or just to stick two fingers up at uh, FTC. Yeah, food, children's food. Yeah. It's not actually; it's adult food. This. So there you go. Oh, that's nice. It, yeah, that, it looks yummy. Yeah. Although in saying that, I did actually make it when I were a kid with duck eggs. Lovely, it's lovely with duck eggs. But it, wait a minute! Oh, I see. Then those are two separate paintings. That yeah. that's not that's not like that's not like two. Pa no, that's not like um right. I, I was, I was doing that. That, that. that's that's Bruce. That, that's, Bruce that's Bruce's Twinkie, with, which we've not finished yet, right? Okay, so yeah, this that is, this, this is the um. The other thing, but oh, you're we're going to go to, back to that. You're going yeah, back to well, the yeah. We're going back to Twinkie because um, we are, it, it needs a lot more detailing, and it needs to make it look like sponge. Yeah, but you can't you can't just keep throwing paint on it and throwing paint on it and throwing paint on it because it'll so just turn into a mush. You paint dots on it. Well, then the, it looks a bit too like you know orchestrated and and, and spun sponging orchestrated it's it's like it's 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 like a, a random explosion of bubbles that, that can only be achieved through many layers yeah well yeah lots of random layers i'm not going to be doing loads of layers today I'm just going to show you type of layering that you would end up building up, and uh, and it, as you go along, you you slowly but surely uh, increasing the um, strength of it. I wonder if I'm using too small a brush. Looks like I'm getting big guns out. Where are you, my brushes? Brushes! Bruce, what do you need? Should we tell him you have my photo to see? LOL. Oh? I don't I don't know what you mean. Yes, um Bruce sent me a photo of Twinkie of a Twinkie and I don't I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, but, Bruce, um, I, the joke went over um, my head. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Oh, Unfortunately, Bruce, I couldn't use those because I didn't know whether they were copyright free. So there, these are th this particular Twinkie uh, were off of um, Pixabay, and it were a copyright free Twinkie. So uh, I went with that. Bec uh, we, we can't use ones that have have got like um, company name brands on them and things like that because. Uh, when we're live, somebody could slap a copyright um, claim against uh, Dino, and we don't want that, really. Not really. No, we don't want that. Oh, uh, he said that's his photo he took. Well, oh, all right. Have... Sorry, I, I, I didn't know that, bro. Yeah, we didn't know I, that. I, I thought... said, that's my photos, Ian. I only share my own photos. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but the, the, prob the problem is, is it had packaging on it. So uh, it would be the people who have, uh, you know, who own the packaging of the thing that would be upset. So it would better was with something that were, um, you know, it's it's better with something that's it ain't got no packaging. You can't tell whose Twinkie that is. Could be any any company's Twinkie. Because it's not in packaging, so it's it's just one of them things, unfortunately. Um, where is where are my brushes? Where are my brushes? 
Shall you use my super brush? Oh, oh I'm bordering on using my super brush. Go on, I'm going to do it. Blow it. It's way too big for the job, but um, I'm going to use my hake brush. Woohoo! A hairbrush? Hake. Oh, okay. Right. See, I'm getting to a point now where I'm oversaturated, so I can't go any farther. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, welcome back, Madonna. Mm hmm. She says, looking good, Ian. And that's what you do. You, you like slowly but surely, but it's a tedious job. But you build it up like that. Okay. And if I have I me mean, you're going, dabbing away, you're dabbing away too, right? Yeah, you dab. Yeah. So I'm leaving some things in place, and some things I'm I'm I'm, I'm splatting on, and some things I'm encouraging to splat. How many more layers and do you think you would have to do? Several more. What, like five? Yeah, maybe five more. Yeah, it depends until it looks as though it's consistent. Right. And it's all like browns and creams and yeah, because the, twink do... the Twinkie is pretty golden brown on the outside. Yeah. And that's that's how I I mean obviously I won't I mean I mean that is actually I'm I'm liking that I'm encouraging that now these splatty bits that like go out of the the painting is adding a, a slightly more like ab, a slightly more abstract expression, which yeah, is, which is interesting. I think. I mean, if you were going for a very tight painting, you could have absolutely mashed all that off and just worked right. on that. But we're not. We're not into tight, are we? We're not into it. We're nice and loose. Watercolor is loose because water is loose. Mhm. Mm right. So I'm. I'm uh, but you, have to, you can't do any more layers. You have to let that dry, right? Yeah. Well, there's other things I can do with it. I mean, I, I, I'm gonna. Uh, that that bit there is where the strong shadow would be. Yeah. And remember what we were doing earlier about um, letting things blend and flow. Uh, the, yeah. Um, let the water so, do the work. Let the, so I'm gonna take it like that, and then I'm put it in water. Then go along again, and it slowly but sure, surely gives you a graduated wash from dark to the lighter area. Which it, that area would be lighter because it's farther away from the shaded area. So, what I'm just going to do to bring it all up a bit is like that. And it, and, and it gives it that real feel of a genuine connection maybe there'll be little bits of dark areas where there's 
deeper nooks and crannies in it. Hi, John Quinn. Welcome. He Hi, says, John. Looking good, Ian. Uh huh. I know it's not the most exciting of uh, paintings you'll ever see, but it does help explain how to go about the business of. Yes, it, it was watercolor uh, 101 today. And, and we might not be on as long as we normally are, but yeah. it, it, that, it's it's the basics. So it, 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 it well, it, it ought to be self-explanatory. I, I, well, I learned myself how to use it and do it. So if I can learn myself how to do it, you guys can. So it's, uh, it's that, that, that hard. It's as simple as that. It's that hard. Bruce says it's great for me. He said it's great for him. But he, well, it's his, it's his favourite subject. He, he, he's loving it. Bruce is loving the, loving the twin case. Um, oh, Bruce said acrylic acrylic is so much easier. You've got a lot more control over acrylic than you do have with watercolor. Absolutely. Although it has got its own issues to deal with acrylic. Right, but Ian doesn't think so. Ian, you think watercolour is easier for you than acrylic, right? Only because I've, I've probably worked with it a lot, a lot more than what uh, I have. Yeah. Uh, you know, you get used to certain um, particular tools. And, and then Madonna, Madonna said, oh, Madonna said there's nothing more exciting than a Twinkie painting. So again, I'm I'm going over with with typical types of uh, you know spongy brown colours, uh, and then ye olde blender. Bruce blah, said, blah 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 blah, oh, blah 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 blah, and the farther away you get from yourself, mm -hmm. the less defined that is. It all fades into one value. But the closer you are, the more defined those holes and crannies and all that sort of stuff is. Right. And Bruce said, I guess, I think he's done, he's done a thousand paintings and only two are watercolor. What? Only two? Well, do you, you know, the best way to actually have a go at watercolour is get some watercolour paper, get your, get your acrylic paints and, and water them down really, really thinly and, and work with them in glazers. You want, and, and learn to use glazers. So I'm I'm looking at the time now and it's forty eight, right? Yeah. Ten forty eight. So are you ready, are you yeah. ready to stop? I'm 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 ready to sum up sum up and and finish. Okay. So I mean, this is an unfinished piece, right? I, I would go on to put like much more goldiness and you know really make it look as though it's a mottled, fluffy kind of thing. And uh, and I, I'd probably define that a little bit more on the um, the shadow, but hopefully these two pictures have helped us to look at these controls here that we wanted to look at. So has yeah. anybody got any any questions on these controls that we looked at earlier? Would you want me to have a review of that? Bruce says looks great, Ian. Thank you, my friend. No problem, old Bruce. We're here to please. Well, that's something you can do as well. I forgot. You'd only do this on last layer, though, I think. He uh, says what you were explaining before is watercolour style acrylics. Yes. Uh, glazers of uh, very thin glazers of very wet. But you can't do that on canvas because of the underbinding. 
with uh, with with watercolor paper. If you if you paint very thin glazes on watercolor paper with acrylic, it's not a problem because the paper actually absorbs it into the painting, into the paper itself. So you don't have underbinding problems. So you can do it in thin glazes. What I want to know is who's going to go out and uh, look up at the very least uh, an egg custard, a slice of egg custard, and even maybe get the recipe and make it. I probably won't. Why? <laughs> I don't. I don't do hard. I don't do any baking. You should do. You should learn to bake. No, because it, it's so it's so fattening. And then you have. No, you no, no, no. You, you bake. We don't, of, we don't have a lot of people to eat it. I don't know. <laughs> Micro. Uh, uh, I I I part of uh, the shifting society called microwave woman. My husband does the cooking. <laughs> well, that's well. That tells us what you need to know. So he um, <laughs> I can, no, I can cook. Mm -hmm. I can cook. I I know how to can follow you? recipes. I can cook, uh -huh. and um, um, he does he does the cooking, and it's not not anything. No fancy. Mm -hmm. It's not fancy cooking. No. Mm. Uh, my 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 wife, she's a very good cook, but she get yeah. as soon as soon as she starts preparing for a big meal uh, with other people, she she gets very panicky, and she needs me there to like organise her. Right. Because she she just, she just even though she knows what she's doing and she's a good cook, she just like goes into like a panic. Oh, what am I doing now? What am I doing now? Uh, I can uh, imagine. Uh, once I've calmed her down and said, look, this is what you're doing, that's what you're doing. She's all right with it. But my wife's a very good cook. I, she, well, just, she, she, she lacks, mm -hmm. lack, lacks confidence in her own ability. That's all. Cooking for a big crowd, I can imagine, is nerve-wracking. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about like feeding the thousands. I'm, 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 I'm talking about you know, having four or five people around. Okay, Madonna. Madonna says she has made egg custard before, and it's good. It's lovely egg custard. And then Bruce has to go. He says, "Sorry, I have to run. Take care, all. Peace to you all." Okay, bye, Bruce. Thanks so Peace. much. For don't let, let don't let the FTC bite. Yeah. I didn't even go ranting today, have I? The, the, no. one, the, 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 the one week that I would have liked to have got a rant in, and did I get one in? No. That's no, my you, rant for the week. That's my we, rant for the week. We not being able to get a rant in. No, we don't want to hear any rants. <laughs> my, my my rant for the week is that I didn't get a rant in. Oh, God. There you go. Rant over. <laughs> oh, dear. I guess so enjoy. Okay, it up. So, everybody, thank you so much for being here today. Mm. And it's, and it's uh, going to be a uh, well. It's pretty much a regular thing every every Friday, mm. four p.m. Eastern uh, Standard uh, Time. Next ne next week we'll get back to doing uh, a painting. And if people do want to send a image in, either get in contact with Diana or get in contact with me on Facebook or whatever. Yes, everybody in the chat. If you want to paint, if you want Ian to paint a picture of some subject that you like. A pet, a land, a landscape that you love, or or people. He paints people too. Um, Pro please send. Is I, I have my email I, address. I, I, is on, um, is on my YouTube. Got, I have got a painting all ready to go, but this is going to be painted in next day or so. Uh, so you know, it's one of them things. I work, I don't want to leave it out for any longer. I I, I started doing this before. Uh, Coppergate started. Well, there's and nothing I've not wrong. Even got I'm sorry, there's nothing wrong with the train. Uh, no, it's just uh, I've been that busy dealing with FTC oh, and, and all that rubbish. 
I've got no artwork done. Okay. But I might even charge them for that. Waste of my business time. Okay, bye, Madonna. Yeah, have bye, a good weekend. Then. Everybody's leaving now. Yeah, bye, 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 y'all. Bye, everybody. Oh, bye, thank bye. you, Ian. Thank you, Ian. Everybody. Okay, bye. Bye, everyone. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Take care. Yeah, thank you, Ian.